Today's online lesson is about promoting a greener and more sustainable future and is delivered by Mr. Carroll. Throughout this lesson, you should make sure you follow the British values at all times, submit all work on time and to the best of your ability, follow the Castle Credo. If you are unsure of anything, then please ask and be sure to make notes throughout the lesson and answer any questions that are asked of you. Only use the chat box for work related questions. The big picture to develop our knowledge and understanding of sustainability and how our choices impact upon the environment. The learning question that we will answer today is how can we promote a greener and more sustainable future? By the end of today's lesson you will be able to define what is meant by sustainability and environmental impact. Describe how plastics are having a negative impact on the world and justify alternative materials that can be used for products instead of plastic. Hello, my name is Mr Carroll and I'm really passionate about looking after our planet. In today's lesson, we're going to answer the question, how can we promote a greener and more sustainable future? <music> You are about to be shown a selection of images. You will have 20 seconds per image to write down as many words that describe the image and how it makes you feel. Be prepared to share your answers with the group. Who do you feel was responsible for the excessive rubbish? How could this have been prevented? And what words did the images make you think of and how did they make you feel? If you're watching this lesson in class, then please pause the video and share your answers with your peers. If you're watching this lesson online, then please answer in the comment box. Disappointed guilt, shocked, thought provoking, sad, responsible, time to change, hurt, scared, animal extinction, environmental impact, single use plastics and plastic pollution. These are just some of the words that I thought of when looking at these images. You are now going to be shown a range of statements about the environment. You must decide whether the statements are true or false. Write either true or false on your paper for each statement. Number 1. 17 billion plastic carrier bags are given away by supermarkets in the UK every year. Number 2. Recycling a plastic bottle saves 90% of the energy taken to produce a new one. Number 3. If you lined up all of the polystyrene foam cups made in just one day, they would circle the earth. And number four, the UK currently recycles approximately 24% of plastic, while Germany recycles 44%. Be prepared to share your answers with the group. The statements were all true. Is this what you expected? If you are watching this lesson in school, then please feel free to pause the video and discuss your answers with your peers. 
If you're watching this lesson online, then please share your thoughts and comments in the chat box. And guess what? Things are getting worse. One of the biggest problems facing humans at the minute is plastic. But why? Why is plastic such a problem? You might be thinking, why does any of this matter to us? Well, the reality is, because of our plastic pollution in the oceans, around about 100,000 animals die each year. Our landfill sites are becoming full. Some of them are filled 25 years in advance of what they should have been. And the really bad thing is that these landfill sites release harmful pollution into the atmosphere. In addition to this, around 24 to 35 million tonnes of plastic enter our waters each year. That's like 24 to 35 million elephants entering the water. Not just me who feels this way. Moved away from single-use plastic, so all of a sudden, the 400 plates that we were wasting can be reused, washed and reused again. More than 40 companies have signed up to an initiative to cut plastic pollution in Britain. Plastic bottles, plastic pollution. Tackling the scourge of plastic. We must reduce the demand for plastic. Coffee cups. Plastic the bottles. Plastic chopsticks. Everyone has woken up to the need for action. Even as far away as China, change is happening. So we Many people believe that all plastics are recyclable, but this simply isn't the case. The waste site behind me handles lots of household waste, including plastics, electrical items and food waste, including garden waste too. The thing is, not all plastics are recyclable, and that's because of the way that the plastic is produced and made, and the internal structure of each individual plastic. We're going to jump into the workshop now to perform a short experiment and hopefully learn why some plastics are recyclable and some aren't. See you there. Hello and welcome to the Design and Technology Workshop. In today's short experiment, we're going to be finding out about the two different types of categories that plastics can belong to. First of all, we've got a plastic bowl, similar to that of what you'd find in a typical household or kitchen or in a camping set. We also have a disposable coffee cup, one which used to have cold coffee in it. The first thing we need to understand is that plastics, otherwise known as polymers, belong to one of two groups. These are thermoforming or thermosetting. If a plastic or a polymer belongs to the thermoforming group, it means that it can be heated up and reshaped multiple times. If I was to apply heat to a thermoforming plastic, it would mean that the product could form a new shape and therefore be recycled. If I was to apply heat to a thermosetting plastic, the product wouldn't reshape because it's resistant to heat. This means that thermosetting plastics cannot be recycled. Today, we're going to apply heat to both the thermoforming plastic and the thermosetting plastic to see how both respond. The way that we're going to test these polymers is to use a heat gun. We're going to apply heat to each of the products and to see how each of these products reacts. First of all, we're going to start with the reusable coffee cup. Always make sure before you do any kind of practical work in DT, you're wearing the correct personal protective equipment or PPE. Today, I'm wearing safety goggles and my overall. As you can see, that this product is heating up and what's starting to happen is that the plastic is starting to wrinkle and starting to melt. The plastic is forming a new shape and this is because of the internal structure of the plastic. It does start to smell. If we were to do the same kind of thing to the bowl, so move this to the side and apply the same kind of process to the bowl. Because it's a thermosetting plastic, it won't melt or reshape. This is because once cooled, it cannot be reshaped. Instead, thermosetting plastics tend to just burn. This has a big impact when looking to recycle products because if you're using a thermosetting product, it can't be chopped down, reheated, and reshaped into a new product, whereas a thermoforming product can. But the main downside to thermoforming products is the fact that they are not heat resistant. 
So if you're to use a thermoforming product for anything that requires a hot liquid or heat to be applied to that product or material, it's going to melt. Whereas with a thermosetting plastic, even though I've held this on here for a significant amount of time, it's not actually starting to melt. The only thing that's happened is the top layer is starting to get a tiny bit softer and to show slight round marks where it's indicating a slight burn. But essentially, the thermosetting plastic remains in shape. Nothing's changed. So after all that heat, we've got the tiny bit of damage to the outside and a tiny bit of burning, but nothing else has really happened, apart from a slight bit of brown burning on the inside as well. Whereas the thermoforming polymer has started to melt and to reshape into a new product. And if we was to carry this on, it could be reshaped into any kind of products that we like. And this is the exact process that products go through when they're to be recycled. We'd chop them up into tiny pieces, into tiny strands, then we'd apply heat and they'd be melted into a new product through one of the plastic manufacturing processes. Let's jump back into the theory. Now you've watched the demonstration on the different types of plastics, in your exercise books, answer the following questions. What is the difference between thermoforming and thermosetting plastics? Describe a product that is made from either thermoforming or thermosetting plastic and explain the reason why the material is suitable. You have approximately eight minutes to complete this activity. You should pause the video and play the video again once the activity is completed. Be sure to include examples to support your answers. Be prepared to share your answers with your group. If you're watching this lesson in class, then pause the video and share your thoughts with your peers. If you're watching this video online, then please share your thoughts and answers in the comments box. Let's take a look at a model answer. When describing thermoforming polymers or thermoforming plastics, you should have identified that they change shape when heated. This means that they can be recycled and they are not suitable for products that get hot in use. When describing thermosetting plastics, you should have described how they do not change shape when heated. This means that they cannot be recycled. It also means that they are suitable for products that get hot in use, as they will not be affected by heat. The biggest threat to our planet is those plastics that are named single-use plastics. You will most likely have heard of these in the news and at school because there is a massive campaign at the minute to try and reduce the amount of single-use plastics that we are using. Single-use plastics are those that are designed to be used just once and then thrown away or recycled. Although on the surface the idea of recycling plastic sounds good, it still uses vast amounts of energy and uses fuels and resources. So the best thing to try and do is to avoid use of these plastics completely. In addition to this, single-use plastics such as carrier bags, plastic cutlery and other single-use items such as plastic coffee cups can often make their way into the oceans and this is because they're littered. From there the wind or animals take them into the river and then the river transports them to the ocean. This is how the process of plastics go from being a product that we use to ending up in the ocean. Can you think of any single-use plastics that you use on a day-to-day -day basis? As well as single-use plastics, there are many other items that often end up in either the ocean or in landfill. Either way, they have a negative effect. Often these items take many years to decompose and to break down. In this activity, we're going to take a look at the common products that are often found either in the ocean or in landfill and work out how long it takes for each product to degrade. You need to copy the timeline and put the products in order of the amount of time they take to degrade. Estimate the amount of time each product would take to degrade if left out in the natural environment. From left to right, the products are single-use cutlery, single-use plastic bottle, a single-use nappy, single-use carrier bag, 
single use straw, polystyrene food tray and a disposable coffee cup. The activity should take approximately 10 minutes. You should now pause the video and resume the video once you have completed the activity. Be prepared to share your answers with your peers. If you're watching this video in the classroom, then please pause the video now and share your answers. If you're watching this video online, please share your answers in the chat box. Consider, which products do you think take the longest to degrade? How long do you think it would take for each of the products to degrade? The product that took the shortest amount of time to degrade is the plastic carrier bag. This takes approximately 20 years to naturally degrade. Next is the disposable coffee cup. This takes approximately 30 years to degrade. Next we have the disposable cutlery which take approximately 100 plus years. Following that we have the plastic straw which takes around about 200 years to degrade. Following that we have the plastic bottle, a common sight in every classroom. This takes approximately 450 years to degrade. Next we have the single use nappy. This takes around about 500 years to degrade. And finally we have the polystyrene food tray, which shockingly never ever ever degrades. Another way in which we as a planet are becoming more sustainable is by using renewable energy, just like that wind turbine behind me. By using wind turbines and other sources of renewable energy, it means we do not have to use the Earth's natural resources, resulting in a depletion of those resources, which would leave the future generations without any of the resources that we've enjoyed. Sustainability is all about leaving resources for tomorrow while still having enough for what we need today. One of the ways that we could reduce our own environmental impact and promote a healthier, more sustainable lifestyle is by considering the six R's of sustainability. The six R's relate to rethink, refuse, reduce, reuse, repair and recycle. When designing, making or buying any kind of product, it is important that we consider the six R's as these will help reduce the environmental impact that that product has but also mean that we're not using the Earth's natural resources or filling up landfill unnecessarily. It will also enable us to think about the correct materials that should be used and using better material choices. As you can see on the screen, the six R's of sustainability have been listed on the left hand side in the green boxes. There are a range of statements on the screen in addition to questions which relate to each of the stages of the six R's process. These are currently in the wrong position. You need to write the six R's into your exercise books and write next to them the correct description or questions that need to be asked. To develop your learning further you should also add in any other questions that you think may be relevant to ask when analysing a product using the six R's of sustainability. You have 10 minutes to complete this activity. You should pause the video now and unpause the video once complete. Be prepared to share your answers. If you're watching this lesson in the classroom, feel free to pause the video. If you're watching this lesson online, share your answers in the comments box. The first thing to think about when looking at the six R's of sustainability is rethink. We consider how we can redesign the product to be more sustainable, how we can potentially avoid having to have that product at all, or think about using better choice of materials. The next stage, can we refuse any particular materials? Are there any materials that we could refuse to use completely, such as single-use plastics, thermosetting plastics, or any materials that couldn't be recycled? Next, it's reduce. Can we reduce the use of these harmful materials? Could we reduce the amount of packaging, or could we even reduce the amount of energy consumption the product uses to make it more environmentally friendly? The next is reuse. 
Is there any way that we could reuse this product when it reaches the end of its life? Is there anything that it could be repurposed for? For example, tyres often get used for swings or on children's play areas. Can we upcycle the products in any way to ensure that it doesn't go into landfill or need to be recycled? Recycle. Can the product be recycled or can parts of the product be recycled? Which parts of the product can't be recycled and why not? Can the product be melted and made into something else? Repair. If the product breaks, can it be fixed and how easily? Is this something that the average customer could do or does it need a specialist with specialist tools and equipment? Using your knowledge from today's session, as well as the six R's of sustainability, you are required to redesign the party bag below to be more environmentally friendly by considering each of the six R's. The contents include a plastic bag, plastic toy, a rubber balloon, a polystyrene aeroplane, and a packet of Smarties. It is expected that you complete a detailed analysis of the product and as such, it will take around about 20 minutes to complete. You should clearly justify and explain all answers that you give. Whilst completing this activity, you should pay particular attention to the following. Grammar, handwriting, spelling and punctuation. Should you not manage to complete this activity today, you will be required to complete it for homework and bring it to your next lesson. It is expected that you'll produce approximately one A4 page of writing for this activity. You should use your notes from today's lesson to support your answers. The big picture, to develop our knowledge and understanding of sustainability and how our choices impact upon the environment. The learning question that we aimed to answer today, how can we promote a greener and more sustainable future? You should now be able to define what is meant by sustainability and environmental impact. Describe how plastics are having a negative impact on the world. And justify alternative materials that can be used for products instead of plastic. Thank you for watching. I hope you found the lesson both informative and enjoyable.